Hello my friends and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. What would we do without people like Erdogan, the president of Turkey? Huh? I think the world will be a much unsafer place. Why? Because Mr. Erdogan has balls. That's why. And he uses ball, the, his balls not to play, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> uh, bowling or anything, but to uh, try to make peace in the world, if you can believe that one. So he's a very, very active little, uh, uh, you know, little bird. And what he's doing here is trying to get um, Russia and Ukraine together at the negotiation table. So the little uh, busy bee Erdogan um, is going to call Zelensky and try to convince him to talk to Vladimir Putin. So this article comes from the new voice of Ukraine from November 12, 2022. Erdogan again wants to talk with Zelensky about dialogue with Russia. Turkish President Erdogan plans to call his Ukrainian colleague Volodymyr Zelensky in the coming days to discuss his position on negotiations with Russia, Turkish newspaper Andalu reported on November 12th. Turkey, and I'm quoting, seeks, uh, seeks to turn the grain corridor into the path to peace, end quote, said the Turkish leader. So he seeks. However, according to Erdogan, Putin's position on this alone is not enough. So he, he intends to raise the issue in a conversation with President Zelensky. Well, I think he should call uh, uh, other uh, capital or other people um, a little bit, um, you know, well, let's say about 8,000 miles maybe to the west across the Atlantic. That's a co country called uh, Zimbabwe. Speak with uh, the leader of Zimbabwean uh, nation. And I'm quoting. All this will allow us to understand whether Turkey's mediation efforts will be able to bring peace closer, says Erdogan. At least he's trying. He's the only one. Maybe uh, a little bit Macron, but Macron was smacked over his beak by uh, Ukrainians when they say, hey, you talk too much uh, with Putin. He zipped it for about, I don't know, two months and a half. And I'm quoting again. Well, now it is important for us to preserve the effectiveness effectiveness of the grain corridor. The same also applies to the supply of fertilizers. President Putin's goal is to give priority to poor countries in Africa, in particular Mali, Somalia or Sudan. The Russian leader offered to supply grain to these countries free of charge. We are ready for the same sensitivity on the issue. Did you hear that? Free of charge. Very good. He also made predictions on whether the grain deal would expire on November 19th. And I'm quoting, in my opinion, threats of temporary restrictions on agreements are the wrong way to, do, to go. During the negotiations, we, start, we stated the longer the agreements last, the better. Meanwhile, it is important to define the framework of this issue. That is, as President Putin said, to make efforts to address or to add, to address the countries in of Africa which are most in need of food it would be an unfair approach to ship agricultural products to Europe and ignore Africa and quote Erdogan said I think that's very nice don't you think Erdogan also noted that the supply of agricultural products to European countries had a negative impact on the position of the head of the Kremlin Russia announced that it was suspending its participation in the grain agreement on October 29th. The Russians cited the explosions in occupied Sevastopol as the reason for this decision, for which the Kremlin blames Ukraine and the UK. Concurrently, Kiev calls Moscow's withdrawal from the grain deal food blackmail and highlights the fact that Russia used a false pretext. Since the beginning of September, the Russian Federation has been artificially creating a queue of ships moving through the grain corridor. Now you know the Russians uh, came back and uh, the grain deal is on. 
Two days after Russia's withdrawal from the Grain Initiative, Erdogan held telephone talks with Putin on November 1st. Erdogan then announced that the Grain Corridor would resume operations on the afternoon of November 2nd. Again, Erdogan saved the world. So he saved the world on three occasions, I think, so far. The first one was the uh, he um, organized the um, first, how you call them, negotiations between the Russians and the Ukrainians, if you remember. That was in the end of um, March. At March, I think it was. And then um, the second one was also the he negotiated, he uh, brokered the uh, uh, grain corridor. The third one, right here, again, talking to Putin, you know, hey, come on, man, come back. And Putin said, okay. And then uh, the fourth one, he tries, what's his name, Erdogan, not only to get the fertilizer and get the grain uh, to African countries, but also to get Zelensky by the collar grab him, put him in the, on a chair and bzz, I mean, uh, talk to him uh, and uh, uh, make him maybe talk to the Russians or at least the delegation, Ukrainian delegation, communicate with Russia. I made a video a few minutes ago with a very interesting news coming from Ukrainian chief negotiator who stated that um, negotiations between Russia and um, Ukraine could, could start uh, next year on the second half of the year, so 2023. Uh, the reasons are stupid, I think. The reasons why uh, the negotiators said, yeah, we're going to start in the second half of the year 2023. And he says why, which I, I think it's criminal, in my opinion. But hey, watch that video and you're going to find out what the idiot said. Uh, not idiot, but... Uh, it's not his fault, he was just a messenger actually, um, but he's got some information obviously uh, already and the information is that they might start then because of, and the reason is idiot, okay, just a criminal I think the, 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 the reason. Anyway, if Erdogan succeeds, I, uh, he deserves a uh, Nobel Peace Prize, even though that was uh, smeared with poop by uh, Obama since he was awarded that uh, without doing anything <laughs> it's like you, you 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 get a college degree before you attend college <laughs> okay and then you don't attend college and you still uh, get to keep uh, the nobel uh, peace prize that's unbelievable that's what happened to obama remember he got a nobel peace prize between he got in, before he got in the office or he got anything done and he said well uh, to to make him uh, you know, keep his word or keep his really. <laughs> what did what happened in uh, um, Libya? Remember, <laughs> wasn't that under his watchful eye? That terrible scene of uh, uh, barbarism, Nobel Peace Prize. Okay, well maybe Erdogan is going to get one, or maybe Biden. Anyway, one of these guys, but at least. Erdogan deserves to be uh, recognized for his efforts and uh, I'm guessing he's getting some, uh, how do you call it, uh, he's got an interest obviously not only to, I'm helping everyone, I'm the big helper, no I don't think so, I think he's uh, playing uh, a few roles, I don't know exactly at this point what is his advantage but we're going to find out, Erdogan is a man of his word uh, and always uh, make sure that he keeps his balls close by. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.